Hello, my name's Steve Mortimer and I've been asked to say a few things about myself so I thought I'd start off by giving you a little tour of the house because usually when you watch videos like this all you want to do is nosy at the books on the shelf in the background and find out a little bit about where people live instead of just looking and listening. So here's a little tour around the house so that you get to know me and where I live and the people I live with. So it's 10 to 9, we've been up for a little while but uh, Leo's watching telly which is what you can hear in the background so a bit like when I ring my bank and it says you may hear life noises in the background that's exactly what you can hear going on at the moment we've got Leo who's having his breakfast with Nala the dog down on the sofa we've got the TV blaring in the background as it always does over here I'd like to introduce you to my wife Davina this is not the usual thing that I would have in the living room, a shrine to my wife, but she has just finished working as a midwife after 19 years and her colleagues uh, made her lots of um, funny things, lots of pictures of herself and lots of little messages saying don't leave. Bring you around to the other side of the house where I can uh, introduce you to some of our other pets. I don't know whether I mentioned, but I live in Swinton, which is just outside Moulton in North Yorkshire. Down here we've got a little guinea pig farm, because as a day job I am a primary school teacher, and I thought it would be a great idea this springtime to mate our male and female guinea pigs, so that the children in my class could see springtime um, as a reality with, with babies, which was wonderful until lockdown, and I've ended up with lots of babies at home, as well as male and female guinea pigs to feed. In the background you can see lots of stars and rainbows again um, there's a story behind all that and I'll go into that in a minute and lots of music CDs and Bibles and DVDs and all that jazz the normal things that people have in the houses and the reason that we've got lots of rainbows and lots of stars is because our other children we've got Harry and Adam who are both teenagers so of course they're not up yet and uh, we had a son called Charlie who was born 10 years ago and sadly died at just a few days old so we remember Charlie with stars and rainbows and we also set up a, a charity in his name which has helped to raise a lot of money for people uh, in very similar circumstances so uh, grieving families and siblings who've lost a brother or sister and with the help of Kay Moby our wonderful youth chorus leader and children's author we've been able to uh, produce a book to support children through really difficult times so that's a little bit about myself walking around the house one room I did forget to show you was the practice room which I'll come on to now call it the practice room it's just a bedroom with lots of the boys instruments and my instrument down there as well all sort of stowed away at the moment the boys are doing their homeschooling thing which uh, is, is a challenge for many people at the moment they're working remotely on iPads uh, Leo has work sent to him uh, on a weekly basis from school so we have his work file out here if you can see see that down there that's Leo's work file so he's ready to get cracking in a few minutes and that will be our morning activity so at the moment rather than being a primary school teacher I'm a homeschooler uh, the tumble dryer is on in the background and doing washing, cooking, cleaning and supporting Davina with her new business venture which is to open a health food and way shop. So that's all very exciting and it keeps us very busy. The reason for showing you the practice room I guess really was uh, my next point which is um, about the youth band and taking over the youth band leadership about a year ago now, I suppose it was January 2019. That was a, a massive privilege to be asked to lead the youth band. Uh, having done it before, about 10 years previous, um, it, it wasn't a decision that I came to lightly because I wanted the young people to have a fresh approach to music as well as uh, somebody that had done the job before. Uh, however, most of them can't remember that time, so that's absolutely fine. And it seems to be working really well with James and myself and a really strong team. Uh, we're really enjoying the challenge uh, of leading the young people through band music. It was also a big privilege to be asked to help out at ISCA last year and to lead the brass option, which is something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, a whole week of spending time with the young people, but also um, improving our musical abilities as well. And that was a, a, a steep learning curve for me as well. But yeah, it's something that I'm really enjoying doing. So I've decided to sit down because 
I've just discovered that I can't actually walk and talk at the same time. I got very bre breathless and very forgetful there. Um, so yeah, isolation I'm finding really quite difficult. To begin with, I was so busy I couldn't really think about it because of the changes to Davina's job. As I'd mentioned, she was a midwife and took over um, a new shop probably a week after the lockdown started so that was a, a huge challenge really because she was struggling to get stock for the shop and so there was a few errands to run for that and uh, a whole refurbishment as well of, of the top half of the shop so we've been extremely busy even though we've been doing that just as a, an isolated family group it has been a juggling act between that and and home life as well so i suppose initially the shock of isolation didn't really kick in because we were so busy uh, but i suppose it's that change in role i'm used to being out at work uh, as a school teacher each day and then my role at the Salvation Army at Moulton as YPSM, so looking after the young people activities, uh, the kids club on a Tuesday night, and um, partly responsible for messy churches as well. Um, so yeah, all of those things stopped uh, and went remote really, I suppose, and trying to keep keep tabs on everybody and make sure everybody's okay and encouraging folks, but also sort of juggling the challenges of day-to-day -day life and how that's changed. So, you know, running the home and the homeschooling stuff, um, and the, all the pet care that you saw earlier on with our menagerie so it's been quite a challenge um, and so that's been the, sort of the first part of it that I noticed really and then what I have noticed in this last week is is I suppose it's the devil really attacking and and making me feel that I'm not worthy to do the jobs that I'm doing so I've had a real sort of spiritual attack of can you can you do this do you think you're good enough and I keep making really silly mistakes in the things that I'm doing even number calculations or typing addresses wrong into a sat nav when I'm delivering things so it's really silly things and I've come to the conclusion that that's the devil just trying to just get in there and say do you know what you you can't do this you need to worry a bit more about it so I'm, I'm asking for God's strength and I'm asking for God's wisdom on a daily basis and that's something that I encourage each one of you to do because we're, we are all in this together I've seen a really lovely picture on social media about saying that we're uh, we're all in in a different boat but the storm that's happening around us is the same and at the moment with the whole coronavirus outbreak uh, it is a worry for everybody uh, but we've got to rely on God's power and God's strength we can't we can't get through this alone it's so wonderful to see uh, the acts of kindness that are going on in our communities and our church reaching out with its digital ministry on a Sunday and during the week as well. And we thank God for Mark and for Sarah who are, are really embracing the, the quiz nights and worship nights. So we're just really praying to that and pray protection over everything that we aim to do as a church. And as a message for the youth band, I suppose speaking to them directly just now, there, uh, there are three parts really to, to what I'd like to say. First of all, uh, to stay connected. And I know young people are much better at this than, than my generation really, at, at that sort of daily encouragement. Video calls, messages, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do to help? What are you up to? And all that sort of thing. Just to try and, um, and keep that connection really as a group. It's something that I'm going to try much harder to do myself using using the Yorkshire Humber and Tees um, website and Facebook posts and things like that. I really must get on there more. Um, but uh, yeah, please do that. Do uphold each other uh, practically and in prayer as well. Uh, the, the second thing, I suppose, really is to keep playing. Um, get your instrument out and just just play the music that you love it's very important to play scales and to, to get better technically but the main thing at the moment I think from a sort of mindfulness point of view is to just make music make the music that makes you happy and if you can find clips um, on online of music that you can just read directly off your iPad or your phone uh, or if you've got some music from school if you've got some of our youth band music some Salvation Army music as well I, I would encourage you to use that because it's so so much of it is scripturally based and it might just make you think of the words of a song or a passage of scripture that's really really powerful and that you just need to hear uh, but you need to give that opportunity in your life uh, to connect with God and I really believe that playing is a way that that's really encouraged me to bring myself to God over the years so please please do that 
and then the third part of it, I suppose is to pray pray for yourself pray for each other pray for our families pray for our leaders in our church and the Salvation Army uh, within the territory in the UK it's a challenging time for everybody and there are lots of things that are uncertain but we can rely on God so we must give our thanks to God we must praise God in, in our practice uh, but we must also bring our concerns and, uh, and bring our hearts to him in prayer so those three things are vitally important and then last of all is to say stay safe stay at home and stay safe wherever you can um, and look after each other So all this leads me on to choosing a favourite piece of music that the youth band play. This is quite difficult, but I've gone with Peter Graham's Shine As The Light. It fe features two songs and Joy Webb's amazing melody of the candle of the Lord is in the quieter section in the middle, which reminds us about being a light in a dark world. Uh, but then the assurance at the end and the triumphant ending that reminds us that the King will come again, the Father's only Son, no more we walk in darkness, the light will come. So this is Peter Graham's Shine as a Light. Mm -hmm. 